Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dan Landing, the Oregon Ducks, wrapping up their spring game Saturday afternoon in Dill One. Phenomenal environment. Like, what a great fan base out there in Eugene, Oregon. Secondly, physical spring game. We've covered a lot of spring games, not matching that level of physicality. Really excited to get into some of the storylines, some of the players that pop for the fellas. Pumped to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to give a shout out to the Oregon Duck fans. Y'all have shown a ton of support to the fellas over the last couple of weeks, whether we're talking the recruiting trail, spring practice. Cannot thank you guys enough for rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, would love to hear some of your feedback in the comment section as well. Some players that stood out to you guys. We always learn a ton from you guys in the comment section. And Dill, I'm going to give you the tee box here. Let's start on the offensive side of the football. A lot of new faces, overarching takes from this Oregon Ducks offense. I think it was kind of a mixed bag today on offense. I think the one thing you probably wanted to see a little bit more was Dylan Gabriel getting the ball out and playing on rhythm a little bit more, similar to what made Bo Nix so effective in that offense. And we've seen so much of Dylan Gabriel playing that way. So I don't think you totally doubt it going in. They are mixing depth charts, so you're not playing with like your number ones all across the board. So obviously a bunch of things to factor in, but you did see some guys really pop off. I mean, Kenyon Sadiq. I know we really just had that one run, but that's kind of what we were talking about when we're talking about guys who can elevate this offense when we were previewing the spring game. I mean, he's that type of guy. You just see that athleticism, that size. I really want to see more of him this year. And then same thing with, I thought, I mean, Jordan James is obviously really good, but Harris kind of being able to be that number two physical guy. Those are the two guys I thought stood out to me on offense who, Surprised me a little bit and like now make me think they're going to factor into this offense. That was my biggest takeaway. And we'll get to the Dylan Gabriel performance, which I, I if there's one thing I'm not doubting, it's a 15,000 yard passer and Dylan Gabriel coming into this Oregon offense with an elite offensive line with Coach Stein calling the plays and the weapons. Like I don't question Dylan Gabriel being productive in this Oregon Ducks offense. I want to highlight the running back play real quick. You mentioned it, Jordan James. We all know what he brings to the table. I don't know if he fell to the ground one time. You talk about a running back that runs the rock hard. That's Jordan James. And then you got a guy in Jay Harris who, massive shout out to Coach Landing, going to the Division II ranks. Dill Bucky Irving was a phenomenal running back for the Oregon Ducks. Ran the ball much more physical than his height and and weight was. That being said, you have two big-time running backs with big bodies that are going to run physically going into the Big Ten. That's a running game that if you had question marks about it translating to the Big Ten, I think those question marks got mitigated Saturday afternoon. Jordan James, Jay Harris running the rock extremely well. Didn't get a chance to see Noah Whittington, but we know what a healthy Noah Whittington can do. Let's dive into the Dylan Gabriel performance. Dill, you said it best. Like I, We're not concerned about Dylan Gabriel producing in 2024. Mixed up that chart, probably messed up some timing. I think the offensive line struggled a little bit more than Dylan Gabriel in terms of picking up blitzes. There were a lot of free runners on Saturday afternoon, so I don't totally think that helped Dylan Gabriel's performance. But you highlight the wide receivers. Tez Johnson just looks different, and we knew that in 2023. And Tez Johnson never got the respect nationally that I thought he deserved. And a lot of the credit went to a guy like Troy Franklin or Bo Nix. Tess Johnson was phenomenal in 2023, going to be elite in 2024. You add a guy like Evan Stewart and Dill, Kyle Casper. And we've been talking a lot about a guy like Jerry on Dickey stepping up, and we're high on Jerry on Dickey. Kyle Casper brings another uh, uh, shout out to the Oregon fans who kind of threw that name in the comment section when we did our preview. You guys were spot on because I thought Kyle Casper looks like a guy that can kind of pro- provide another layer in which to attack defenses down the field. Yeah, and and just being able to win, I mean, that route at the end of the game, I know they called out of bounds, but that's like the type of route that those are big-time plays. Big time when you're down around the red zone, you need a guy to make that type of play. I mean, he's there. And you obviously have Evan Stewart who can get vertical all across the field, but again, when you're down in the red zone and you want to just be a hard matchup, him, Kenyon, Sadiq, those guys, I think they'll be interesting because you look, the bulk of Oregon starters aren't – like. They're not those matchup nightmares in the red zone. Taz Johnson, obviously, he, I mean, I came away from that. He's going to be the leading receiver, right? He does exactly what Dylan Gabriel wants to do when he's getting the ball. I mean, just making plays with it. But, I mean, you kind of talk like those two guys, especially that we just mentioned, Casper and Sadiq, look like guys who 
again, in the red zone can be a little bit more effective, which was a bit of an issue at times for Oregon. You think back to that Washington game where they couldn't quite punch the ball in. I mean, you have two big body weapons. One of those guys works out. That does help them a lot. Another thing that I want to touch on before we go to the defense, we mentioned Dylan Gabriel. We mentioned the wide receivers, the running backs. Dante Moore looked phenomenal this afternoon. And Dante Moore's a guy that we all know. He's the most talented quarterback in this room, and there's no question about it. Why does he come to Oregon? He wants to develop. He wants to get better command of running an offense where he didn't really get that opportunity at UCLA. Not great offensive line play. A lot of, not a lot of continuity during that season for him as a true freshman. Still, Dante Moore behind a good offensive line with elite pass catchers. It might not be in 2024, but how fun is it for Oregon to know you have elite quarterback play in 2024 with Dylan Gabriel? In 2025, it's not going to take a step back. In fact, might even take a step in the right direction with Dante Moore. Dill, Austin Novosad looked pretty good too. You talk about a quarterback room that the Oregon Ducks have. Not many more talented rooms than what's cooking up there in Eugene. And Dante Moore, you, you kind of saw him avoid those things that were – the problem at UCLA where you just make those horrible plays. I mean, obviously you can't take sacks in the spring game necessarily, but again, ball was coming out on time, not holding it like you felt like you did sometimes at UCLA and not making like throwing across your body or making Aaron throws, just playing really. Taking what's there, taking the check down. Checking it down, yeah, exactly. And then obviously you see those highlight throws. I think it was to Justice Lowe, but I definitely could be wrong. I mean, that type of throw over the middle that you know he has in his bag. So, I mean, you can combine that that arm talent with like a like kind of the way Dylan Gabriel pre- plays where it's very much just take what you can get. I mean, you have someone in Dante Moore who's a national champion. It, the ball play. looks a little bit different coming out of Dante Moore's hands. I think all Oregon fans see that. And once he puts it together between the years, you're, you're looking at a, a top 10 NFL draft pick, what we thought he would be coming out of high school. Perfect fit. And I, I'm really excited for Dante Moore and the progression. I thought it was a weird fit going to UCLA. This is, where he belongs, where he can best become the best quarterback. Really good fit. Excited about Dante Moore. Now, Dill, going over the defensive side of the football, I got to just put my hand up and say I'm wrong, which happens plenty of times on this show. I had question marks about the defensive line saying, do they have difference makers? Is this defensive line going to hold them back from winning a national championship? Dill, I think we know why. Dan Lanning didn't go out and get a ton of defensive linemen in the portal when I was banging the table for it, right? You got Jamari Caldwell, who's going to be a guy. Dill, Amari Washington, Ben Roberts, taking a look at my list, true freshman Tyon Gray. I mean, I look at this Oregon defensive line and say these guys who are the first years are going into their second year, you kind of understand why Dan Lanning was happy with what he had because this defensive line, I thought – won the day against the offensive line. And we all know how good this Oregon Ducks offensive line is going to be in 2024. And you got a solid deep group. I still think the one thing I come away with, you got to see someone emerge as like the star. I think you still are yeah. looking for that Great. absolute game record. I think Mateo, you played pretty good. It felt like he wasn't necessarily on the field a ton. Not that I would have expected him to given where he's been, but like that, that type of guy, whether it's him, whether it's purchase to Iodi, I mean, somebody's got to come up and just play a little bit more dominant, I feel like. Because, again, you kind of have now a deep team that you haven't had in the past in Oregon, and you have layers of guys and your freshmen and true or true freshmen, redshirt freshmen, sophomores are playing good football. But somebody, I think you still hope, is going to emerge into that, like, monster. Who's and there's a lot play. of names that could step up, right? You mentioned Jordan Birch, Mateo, you, Blake Purchase true freshman Elijah Rushing, who I think needs to work a little bit more on the physicality aspect of the game. That's kind of what we knew we had to work on. The burst off the line of scrimmage, like he certainly has that down. Which one is going to step up? That's probably the question that we have going into the fall. And that's something important because you go back and look at the Dan Landon defenses for the Georgia Bulldogs. They always had that guy, right? Whether it was a Nolan Smith or Trayvon Walker, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, they had that game record. They had that guy that could take over the line of scrimmage. Who's it going to be in this Oregon Ducks team? And heading in the margin ball? for error of what is successful for the Oregon Ducks, which is big time championship is probably the minimum goal in the national championship. I think if I'm Oregon, that's kind of what I'm thinking oh, yeah. is very much possible. And you, that's, I mean, if you don't win at all, I, I don't want to say it's a failure, but like, that's probably the goal. That's probably where Oregon and Dan Lanning have gotten themselves to. 
So when you don't have that much room for error, you need a couple guys who just play a little bit different. Again, I think we're starting to see them build that depth and like you have enough guys who are good players, but again, you still, I, that to me is one thing I think they'll have to figure out in the summer is who's going to be there. You make no mistake about it. Winning a national championship is the standard in Oregon now. Like that's what I think this team is. I think it's a top five team heading into 2024. It's a national championship team. You look at the linebackers, Dill. Some of the young linebackers played some really good football for Oregon. You saw some good things out of Braden Platt, who really was one of my favorite linebackers coming out of high school in that 2024 class. I think you know what you have with Jeff Boss and Justin Jacobs. Linebacker room seems deep. Want to go to the position that we had some question marks about heading into the spring game. That was the safety spot. Kobe Savage goes down with an injury in a monster collision with Jordan James. We don't have question marks about the cornerback spot, right? With Cam Alexander, Jabbar Mom, and Nico Reed, Jalil Florence wasn't healthy, Dante Manning. Cornerback spot's loaded. What's the safety room going to look like? Tasheem Johnson's going to be a guy. I think he looked really good. True freshman Aaron Flowers is a ball player. This was a guy, again, another one that I loved out of high school from the state of Texas. Has all the physical traits that you want. I think the question was, can he pick up that playbook, develop those instincts to play as a true freshman? Right spot, right time, seemingly all Saturday afternoon. Going to be a guy that I think contributes year one for this Oregon program. Especially because you, you look, again, the one thing I think you're kind of looking for is that more premier free safety. I thought, again, Tyshim Johnson, as you kind of mentioned, looked pretty comfortable there. I thought that was a really nice play he made on Kenyon Sadiq running up the seam. Something that, again, it, it, that's kind of the goal of the free safety. I don't think they need to necessarily worry about that true center fielder. Oregon just because of how good they are on the cornerback spot and again you can leave Jabbar Muhammad he doesn't necessarily need a ton of help I don't think I mean he obviously he's going to be the guy so I think you do have a little bit of flexibility but you need someone who has those instincts in the middle similar to what they had last year at number 33 I don't know why I'm blanking on his name Evan Williams but like they need somebody to kind of step in fill that role have the instincts that you need I thought you saw some moments from Tysheem Johnson and I mean I think Aaron Flowers you're kind of right in terms of playing that more back end role, not necessarily that box guy. He does kind of look like he's going to factor into this defense in some way. Cause Kobe Savage, we love what he does, but much more comfortable in the box, not necessarily that premier cover guy. It kind of opens the door for Flowers to play a little bit. Yeah, I think I think Aaron Flynn, I wonder what they do in terms of moving the corners. So I, I could see some of these cornerbacks working in that safety too during fall camp. I thought you loved what you saw from Aaron Flowers, Dill. This is a team that I would ask you. If there's one thing that you want to see from this Oregon Ducks team from now until fall to make this team a national championship level team, what do you want to see? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to diverge much from our conversation about the defensive line. I'm just looking for somebody to be a hammer. I, again, I think they're filling it out. I thought Ben Roberts, he took the jump you wanted to see him take. You obviously have Caldwell and Mari Washington. Both have played pretty good in the past somebody's got to take this over and just be dominant. And I, again, I'm kind of looking at a guy like Mateo. You, he feels like the candidate to me. I felt like I liked what you saw from him today again, in, in somewhat limited snaps, but to me, that probably is the direction they go, but somebody has got to do it. I just, I don't see how else they can kind of reach their peak. That's what I'm seeing. And you go back to teams that have won national championships in the past, Michigan, Georgia, the last three years, they have, they had the game records. Will Oregon have the game records in 2024? That's probably my biggest question as well. A bunch of candidates to fill that void. We'll see how it turns out in the fall. We'll talk a bunch. We're probably going to do a lot of film dives onto this Oregon team. Appreciate y'all rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.